She's the first female minority leader in the state. Now she wants to break another glass ceiling. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. And she's already correcting me. <laughs> and when I say uh, the next glass ceiling, I'm not talking about the first female governor because we've already done that, but the first Republican uh, female governor, and she's the first leader, and she will clarify that as soon as she comes on the set. She's pushing people around now that she's running for governor. <laughs> State yeah. Representative Patricia Morgan is here. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you. Now, you're seeing this at the, uh, at the uh, regular scheduled time at 7.30 on MIRI TV. Um, we're running late, obviously, on... Uh, Fox based on World Series coverage, and that probably will happen on Wednesday, Thursday. We will probably rerun some of this conversation um, in the midnight time slot over the next week or two as well. Although the, the, the reports are that a lot of people stay up for the game and you just keep going. So stay up. Terrific. Uh, glad to have you aboard. So Alan Fung, the Cranston mayor, uh, reportedly announced today, we record the show early in the afternoon. He had a scheduled event at 4 or 5 o'clock. Um, but it's pretty obvious he's running for governor. But beating him to the punch uh, early this week with a video announcement was Patricia Morgan, state representative for West Warwick and the first female Republican leader, or first female leader, period. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a headline that reflects it, and here's some of the pizzazzy video that she sent out. Patricia Morgan, and today I humbly and honorably announce my candidacy for governor of Rhode Island. I want to be that leader for you. It's worth going on YouTube. It's a pretty good uh, presentation. Congratulations on your decision. Thank you. It's always uh, a process. It is. Yeah. It's a long process. Yeah. I mean, last time you were here, you were saying you're thinking, and I was kind of pushing you on. You know, like, yeah, I'll get back to you uh, on that. What does uh, what does uh, humbly and honorably mean? What does that mean? It is a humbling experience, right. <laughs> as you know. And what's the honorable part about it? You know. I'm not running for a title. I'm not running to get jobs for my relatives. All my relatives have jobs. I'm actually running to put the best interests of Rhode Islanders uh, first and foremost in our government. And I think that's an honorable, what is it, uh, hmm. reason. You know, motive for running for office is, is a really profound subject, mm -hmm. I think. And I do think that, that the general public has soured on politics and politicians. I think, yeah. uh, we, we question motive all the time. Uh, at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't have good people running for office, the democracy can't work and the trains don't run on time. Not that they do anyway. <laughs> uh, so talk to me about, about motive more. You know, I am the House Minority Leader, as you have pointed out. Mm. I actually am the first female in leadership in the House of Representatives in its history. The Democrats have not had a female mm. in the leadership. Um, but Smaller pool from which to succeed, of course. <laughs> uh, perhaps, yes. perhaps, yes. but not a better but, pool. But nonetheless, yes. Okay. Um, I think I do a good job. I think I have been helping people in Rhode, under, uh, Rhode Island understand that the common sense principles that we have can make a real difference in their lives. Uh, when I studied the Convention Center Authority or fought tolls or what, what, uh, whatever it is that we do, um, I, I think I've done a good job there. But when the tolls came up, when some of this bad stuff happens, I can't stop it as a minority leader. And I think that I can have a better impact. I can help people in the state more if I'm governor. I think I have a really clear idea of what's ailing or hurting Rhode Island right now, Rhode Islanders, and I want to help. What's ailing Rhode Islanders? I think we really have a hostile business climate, and I think we have an insider culture here that is really, really hurting our state. Um, and those are two things that a governor can really have a big impact on. What's the nature of the inside culture? Well, okay, we looked at 38 studios, and I know that's been talked about ad infinitum, but that was all about insiders. They created a pot of money, and they let everybody put their hands in it to the point that there wasn't enough money to make that, that venture um, successful. Uh, that's about insiders. It's about, and I've been there. Come on, I've been in the House of Representatives now for seven years, 
and I've seen that culture where if you have access to leadership, you get special bills and special privileges that hardworking Rhode Islanders don't get. And those special privileges and bills oftentimes make it our cost of living more expensive. You mentioned 38 Studios. It, it's the cloud that never seems to, to fully dissipate. I'm guessing over time, uh, wounds will be healed, but it's been a long, slow, seven plus year process. But and I, I don't know how we put that to bed. And I think in, in, in some ways, although I think you've made really constructive arguments on a number of things, including roadworks and the tolls, and it's probably a longer list than that. I'm sure there is. Mm -hmm. I think you've preyed on that, on that cloud too. No, uh, I don't hear. Uh, well, actually, I haven't. But I but haven't heard one thing from you in your tenure that I've heard some very constructive arguments against proposals that have been made, and I've seen legislative agenda items where you put a package together, and I understand that. But I don't ever remember me walking away from <laughs> your work thinking. Wow, that's a vision. That's a vision. Okay. So help me with that. Because um, I, 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 think, I think you folks on the Republican side have been whacking away, sometimes effectively, sometimes really effectively not getting the credit because we see the osmosis of you guys make we an argument. We put the bills in and they steal and them. It comes out the other way, yeah. right? It's not all about bills and legislation. It's about, it's about, it's about the vision thing. Mm -hmm. What's your vision? All right. What's the state supposed to be? So you, did you watch my video? I did. All right. We used to be, a, we actually still are a lot of. You want me to just play the video? Would you play the, no. the video? <laughs> actually, it's a really good it. video. It's really That's good. right. It's a really good video. You know, Rhode Island has so much to love, even now. We do. Um, I mentioned some of the, the, we have superlatives about Rhode Island, things that we should really be proud of. But we can't be proud of our political culture. Right, there is just too much corruption, and we talk about hard corruption and soft corruption. There's the hard corruption like Fox and Gallison that sends people to prison, but there's that soft corruption, which is the insider dealings that go on in, in, our, in our government. And the 38 studios, for me, it's not, I think that's the overhang for people because they don't believe that that's gone. They still believe, and they are right that if you have access to leadership, if you are a big contributor, if you have, have uh, access, that you are going to get special deals. Remember Article 18, and I'm sure people don't even know what's Article 18. That was the budget article that was in two years ago. It was specifically written for uh, a, wind, a, a wind turbine developer to shift costs from him to ratepayers to average Rhode Islanders. And we worked really hard and we got that pulled from the budget. But that was insider stuff. So should people be skeptical? They should. So it's not just about 38 Studios. It is about our culture here. And people have a right to worry about it. No wonder they don't trust politicians because they think that we're all making deals behind their backs and not in their best interest. It's a transactional business politics. It's a transactional business. No, it isn't. It of shouldn't it is. be. It shouldn't be. Democracy is a negotiation. Well, listen, there is compromise, I understand. You can't get 100% of what you want ever. But it's, I don't, I guess I don't understand what you mean by transactional. In each and for every. For things to get done, for, for transactions to occur, for progress to be made, for arrangements. I don't even like to use the word deal because Donald Trump is, is overused the word deal, I think. But everything that needs to be done needs to be done by, I mean, you get a, this becomes a very abstract conversation now that we're having. But projects are transactional. Infrastructure is transactional. I, I get it. Legislation is transactional. I get that. And agreements have to be made. Deals have to be done. And not all that stuff is 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 being negotiated on the Dan York show. And so that's so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So yes. But and you've been transactional the in, in your political career. The overall arching theme ought to be what is in the best interests of the common good, right? How do we help hardworking Rhode Islanders? Not 
how do we help this little group? How do we help this individual? How do we help this individual? And it should be about be, what is the okay. common good and what help, what serves the best interests of the greatest number of people. I can accept that. I can accept that. Um, who's been the culprit in working in the opposite direction more, the governor or the general assembly? Whoa, that's a hard question. They're they're both guilty. All right. Well, I'll give you a break to think about. <laughs> Who is worse? Because that's the question that I ask. Do I have to do we'll, worse? We'll, we'll come back in, in just a second. There's a whole list of items I want to get to with Patricia, so hang in there. In the meantime, I just want to let you know, uh, if your transactional life is a little bit lost and you want to put it all in the palm of your hand, Card Valet is the app that you ought to download from Navigant Credit Union. Just go online to navigantcu.org and learn all about it and download the app from where you download apps, the Apple Store and all of that. Uh, it's everything in your banking world in the palm of your hand, even more sophisticated than the average online banking program, all at Navigant Credit Union, online at navigantcu.org, member NCUA. Right back with Patricia. I to see the direction that the state is in right now, and I believe I can change that direction radically. All right, well, there's Joe Trillo, the state representative uh, from Warwick, who is also the co-chair, honorary co-chair of the Trump campaign. He uh, reportedly, in, the, in a piece on Eyewitness News last night, indicated he was 99% toward, uh, toward formally announcing for governor. Your, your formal announcement. By the way, not, not a lot of balloons and everything else. You just put the video out. Yeah, it's is a that, millennial way to do it. it, it, it right, it's, it's yesterday's That's right. way of doing business, all the, right? All the big players are doing it by video Too nowadays. Too bad millennials don't vote in the Republican primary. <laughs> well, maybe now they will. Well, perhaps they will. I don't know. Uh, did you figure out in the last two minutes who's the worst culprit in terms of the w things you're worried about, the governor or the General Assembly? You know, I think they're both bad. I've seen the things that the governor has done, though, so she's my opponent. Let's talk about it. Mm. I mean, I think she's made bad, she made bad um, investments with our pension dollars because she put them in hedge funds and then I believe those hedge fund managers As helped treasurer. her raise money. As That's treasurer. right. I think that um, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the decisions she is making is about who has helped her campaign, who is helping her campaign. And I, and I don't think that's how we should be running government. We shouldn't be looking at those folks in front, I mean, we should be looking at all of Rhode Island and thinking about average people she in their promised, homes who are she, struggling. She promised to deliver a 38 Studios independent investigation. She never did. Is that going to be a talking point for you on this campaign? It may be. I don't know. You got to thread the needle, though. You got to win the Republican primary. Yes. Alan Fung, the, the mayor of Cranston, uh, I'm guessing announced today. Joe Trillo is in. Uh, who, gosh, knows who else is going to play in this uh, smaller uh, political field. Did you evaluate those two guys? Because they've been pretty much out there saying they were going when you decided I to did. run. I did. I did. And? I'm fairly, I'm confident that I can win the primary. Because? Because I have a, I've been working at the state level for a long time. And as you know, I've been fairly visible, right? Hmm. The, the truck tolls, the convention center authority. I've been a really strong voice on the statewide level. Um, Alan's done a decent job in Cranston, but that's just a city, and he has barely said anything about statewide issues. I have. I have a real backbone, and I've been sticking up for, for average Rhode Islanders for a long, long time. Well, that's a really interesting take. Um, are you suggesting that he's kind of a political chicken, a little too careful? I'm not suggesting anything about Alan. I'm just suggesting. Yeah, you I'm just, just did. You just suggested nope. that he's. Be, he I'm really talking hasn't, about me. Hasn't really spoken to the statewide issues. I think you're absolutely right about that. I think yep. he's pulled a lot of punches. I That's think right. he probably perceives himself as the um, the leader in this smaller primary, and but so people why people have to know what you believe in. You can't have both sides of of, a, of every issue. You really have to tell people what you believe in. I think people know who I am. What about, There's and, no doubt about that. There's Mr. some bold colors here. Mr. Trillo, who uh, you know, I think you're fond of. I think I'm fond. I, I know I am. Yeah. He, you know, he's a he's a bull in a china shop. Uh, kind of calmed down in, a, in his last uh, term. Uh, I think you and he are, in, in some ways, perceived at least on a general level as as fighters, and maybe from the same cloth cut. 
versus funds who might be a little bit too careful. Uh, do you split the anti, for lack of a better term, Republican establishment vote, you and Joe? I, I don't know at this point. Um, all I'm going to tell you is I'm going to run really hard. I'm not going to take anything for granted. I think I have a clear message, and I think people know at this point who I am, what I believe in. I mean, it's out there. Um, and I think it's, it is a message that resonates. You know, I'm in a really Democrat district. Speaker of the House Murphy, former speaker, lives right across the street from me. And my district was drawn to keep him safe. So it's very Democrat. And I win there. Um, and I win there with my message, which I think is a common sense message. I come up with practical solutions. And I'm, I'm there every day trying to help regular folks. So I think that resonates. What's your management skill? You've got to run an administration if you're the governor. Uh, well, I have small business experience. I, my first husband and I had an air charter and flight school at TF Green Airport that was very successful. Um, and now I have a small business. I'm a financial advisor, so I, I do have management experience. Running a fleet of people? A fleet. I mean, I'm just asking, do, how many folks have you managed in your, in your, in your lifetime? Is it important to have that experience? I am sure, I am confident that I will be a good governor. Because? Because I can attract, I can make good decisions. I have, I have a core philosophy. I know what I believe in and I will pick good people to help me. Will I run the whole state government by myself? No. But I will make sure that I have good people around me to support me and I can make the hard choices. I have the political will to stand up for the people of Rhode Island. So I'm confident I'm going to be a good governor. All right. We'll come right back and hit some issues. Stay with us. I was surprised and a little overwhelmed. But there was, to me, the opportunity that I have my whole life been waiting for to change this culture that exists was handed to me. And I happen to be in a position that many women are not in. I am an elected official. I have an amplified voice. And after the hashtag happened, Me Too, I had a million people behind me who were affirming that these are real experiences. You know, in a way, it's cliche to ask you about Teresa Tanzi, mm -hmm. the state representative who, you know, this week came out with the hashtag Me Too momentum and suggested that there was a legislative leader that. Uh, was looking for sexual favors for advanced legislation, my paraphrase, according to a journal report. But she's kind of ridden that horse around in the last week or so. Um, she hasn't, uh, hasn't accepted an invitation to come here. Can you believe that? No. I have some, uh, some serious questions for her, and she's welcome any time. Your take, it, it, by the way, do you feel like it's cliche for me to ask you about it? Uh, first of all, you're, you've been in the legislature for a long time, so I yeah. think that's okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you're a woman. And uh, at the same time, I don't feel like I need to push the thing on you. So just come tell me, so, tell so me what. So I have absolutely no knowledge of any of those kinds of activities. I just don't. I, I don't. I know in the Republican caucus, it simply doesn't happen. I can't answer for the Democrat side. But I think that Representative Tansy owes it to everyone, to everyone in the building and to everyone in the state to tell us who it was. Really? I do. Because that person, no, 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 hang on. Go ahead. That person who is trying to do a transaction shouldn't be representing us in the state house. Seriously, that's, that's a bad thing, right? When you say, hey, I'll give, you, I'll give you some special favors if you give me sex. Really? We want that kind of person representing us? Do we really, Dan? Maybe you think it's OK. Patricia. Okay, see? I know you don't. Come Nobody on. thinks it's okay. But here's, I'm, I'm sitting Wait, here almost aghast. You don't want to know who it is? I, I don't think it's everybody in the building. To be honest with you, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I don't get up in the morning wanting to know. I, I, I think that this requires nuance, understanding of the rights of, of victims. Look, she's played this thing. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. She's played it. This, you know, waiting my whole life thing is something that deserves a lot of analysis, and we have on the radio more than here. But you've you got to understand that due process is important, and, and just because she spit it out to the journal, it doesn't mean that 
that that she person can, needs to be identified. The court of public opinion, you've been through the She rough can rough. tell the state police. She could tell the state police, and they could investigate it. But this is the point. Do we want legislation passed under those Ms. circumstances? Maybe I misunderstood you. I, I, I'm, I'm hearing what is it, that you, what if it's you, bad you, legislation? You want, a, you want a public identification of this individual? I think we deserve to know. I do. What? On the off chance, and I've not ever said it, that I think this, on the off chance that it's not true. Ah. Then that's up to her to say whether it's true or not. She's 11 feet out of a 10 foot board. Why would she do that? Uh, well, then why did she make the allegation? I'm very surprised that you said that. Um, uh, no, Dan. I, I, I'm just really, very surprised. Really, do you want legislation passed under those circumstances? What if it's of bad legislation? Not. Of course so not. So do we want that kind of individual making those kinds of deals? By the way, we have never it? learned from her whether the legislation that she referenced, which she didn't specify, ever did get passed. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea what this is all about. I just, I, I'm just, I'm just um, kind of shocked that, that, that that's your take. Um, I didn't know that that was your take. I'm, I'm going to have to digest that. Okay, I, you're going to digest as, it. As, especially <laughs> as a woman, I would think that you would recognize that the, the, the the going philosophy is that she's under no obligation to advance that case and whoever is allegedly or reportedly the culprit may have a story to tell as well but once named is DOA in the court of public opinion so I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm again, not certain that that's she doesn't a constructive have to reveal your, your it thinking to the process public, there worries but, me but if the state police did the investigation I don't believe she's made the complaint to the state police no so she they suggested she will not tell the state police all right, let me be clear, because so I, I don't want to leave this uh, Doesn't untended. that cast aspersions on everything we do in that building and how legislation gets passed? Does it get passed, again, because it is good legislation, good for Rhode Island, good for Rhode Islanders, or does it get passed because I want it and I'm... But someone I want to be clear. will promise it to me. You're saying that somehow she should go about that the person she's referencing is publicly identified. That sh that's her responsibility to publicly identify that person. I think she has an obligation to tell the state police who it is so that they can investigate. That's not, th that's not what you originally said. She should allow an investigation of it to go forward. We don't want that kind of person in our legislature. Well, you know that an investigation may very well not turn up a name. Okay. Well, then everybody will be exonerated in the state house. Mm, not necessarily not either. Necessarily. <laughs> well, I didn't really expect this segment to derail on Teresa Tanzi. I thought it would be a quick hit, but um, let's just wrap it up by suggesting that it's going to be an interesting campaign, and you always throw me a monkey wrench I every once in a while. I surprise you. I surprise you. All right, well, I wish you the best of luck in the race. Thank you. And uh, you can come as often as you need to. Right? Okay. Squeaky Wheel gets the grease here and on the radio. Uh, Patricia Morgan, always a surprise. Oh. Running for governor. We'll be right back. Hey, did you know that we have a resiliency officer in Rhode Island? Oh, Patricia's ready to get it. She wants that segment too. <laughs> we'll figure out what it is and meet the officer tomorrow here on our state of mind. In the meantime, we'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRL. Thanks for watching. Good night.